Welcome back to my channel or welcome. So today I have fringe, the fringe is back. Although in the next video my fringe won't be there because it's pre-recorded. But she's back. So today's video is my February wrap up and we're being consistent. I did a January one, I'm doing a February one. So far so good, I say, as we're only two months into the year. But we'll go with it, we'll go with it, we'll have that positivity because last year I did like two. Laziness, isn't it? So I do not know how I read as much as I read this month. I kind of discovered this is going to sound really strange, but I discovered that I can actually read quickly if I don't go on my phone. Who knew that? Who knew that was possible? Who knew that would be an outcome? So that's why I think I've read as much as I've read this month. So let's get into it. So these are in no particular order because I could not be bothered to sit and work out what order I did it in and, you know. So there's 17 books. 17, yes. I have no idea how I did this, so let's go into it. I'm not going to do a full length review for each, I'm just going to give them star ratings and a bit about why I gave it what I did. So let's go. The first one is Kill Over Company by Brian Masters, and this is a true crime book about Dennis Nelson, and he was a serial killer in the 70s and 80s who killed young men. So I reread this. Um, because I wanted to read the book that was coming out written by Dennis Nelson this year. So I reread this with Mia and just wow. This is one of the best true crime books, in my opinion, on Dennis Nelson. I've not read much on Dennis Nelson, but this is one of the best ones I have read. And it's just so insightful and obviously the author did speak with him in prison a lot of the time, so that's why the info in here is so accurate and just well put together. The next one is five books and that's because I reread the Percy Jackson series. So I reread these with my sister because she wanted to read them and I forgot how much I love Percy Jackson like I've always loved Percy Jackson and the films are very let's not talk about the films I love Logan Lim and don't get me wrong but the films just weren't it and I think we all know that so it's really nice to read these with the fact that knowing that there was going to be a really good adaptation coming out this year which Rick Royden himself is working on so I'm really excited about that but these are superior I have always been a huge uh, Harry Potter fan rest in peace um but obviously this past couple of years I've really gone off it due to JK Rowling which is why I don't really talk about it because I don't think it's appropriate to talk about so yeah I don't think it's really appropriate to talk about given the circumstances of JK Rowling so rereading this made me realise how superior these are and I'm just confused why this doesn't have the hype that Harry Potter does and yeah fantastic so much diversity and i just loved it this is winter by alice osman osman i always say her last name wrong and i love alice she writes incredible books i love the heartstopper series radio silence was one of my favorite books of last year her writing is incredible i love how inclusive she is and this was just a novella to solitaire and to do with charlie and nick so i really enjoyed this it's a nice quick read and i gave it three stars because it wasn't amazing but it was satisfactory and I really enjoyed reading it about Nick and Charlie and it was just a short little book so it was fun. Then I read James Herbert The Fog and you've already seen me talk about James Herbert and how much I love his writing and I've already given a short little review on this so I won't be going into this but yeah I've read this and I just realised I haven't given star ratings for any of the books I've did so far. So Kill and Company I gave 4 stars, the Percy Jackson series I gave them all different numbers, the average was probably 4 stars, so yeah I gave this 5 stars. Then I read Lovecraft Country which I'm very upset about, so 
I picked this up and read this because my boyfriend wants to watch the TV show. So I'm one of those bitches that needs to read the book before I watch the television show. And so that's why my boyfriend hates me. Um, so I finally picked it up and read it before he was actually going to kill me. And I was very disappointed. So I thought this was actually going to tackle Lovecraft's racism. But it didn't. There were so many opportunities where it was going to, but it never did. And um, there's a scene with a haunted house. And it's in a white neighbourhood owned by black people. So I thought they were going to have... They were going to use the horror trope of the racism from the white people. But it didn't. And that was a very, very, very big missed opportunity that they could have done. And they didn't. So I was disappointed by that. And also the blurb is literally within the first 100 pages and then it's solved and then it's very loose stories connected to the characters and I just it wasn't that good so I've not even rated this because I don't even know what I want to rate it um but I'm really excited to watch the tv show because apparently the tv show does actually tackle the racism and is really good so I think the author missed the mark with this so I'd be very intrigued to actually watch the tv adaptation because I know Jordan Peele has worked on it and I've loved everything Jordan Peele has done so we will see I am legend and again there's a video on my channel within my horror in 24 where I give a review of this and I've kind of upped it to four stars. I did give it three stars, but I've upped it to four stars now. I've reflected and thought about it. So yeah, enjoyed that. Then I read History of a Drowned Boy by Dennis Nelson. And again, this is to do with Killing for Company. It's by the actual serial killer, Dennis Nelson. I'm not going to be reviewing this. I'm not going to be giving it a star rating because I do not think that's appropriate given the circumstances that he's written this in so I'm not gonna do that. Then I read Shiver and Smash. Again my reviews for this are in my Horror and 24 reader vlog. Again enjoyed these five stars, three stars. I completed my Lord of the Rings read along with Charlie. We did this as a buddy read and we finally finished our Lord of the Rings journey together and oh my god I miss these characters already. Honestly, they are incredible characters and I wish there was more fantasy books written like this in this day and age now. Fantasy books tend to be more young adult and that sort of thing, whereas this is the sort of fantasy I love. And oh, I just want to reread them again already and these copies are just beautiful. They're so stunning, aren't they? So yeah, I'm really sad these are over, but I had such a blast reading these. And these are probably going to take a very, very big spot on my heart and become one of my favourite series. And I will probably reread these every year. Purely for the fact that they feel nostalgic, even though they aren't because I've never read them before. I've read The Hobbit and The Fellowship of the Ring, but I've never completed the whole series by reading it. So I think that's what was so special for me. And I think I literally gave every book in this trilogy five stars. So that's how much I love them. Then the next one is The Family Next Door by Jean Glatt. And again, this is in my Horror 24 vlog. Um, I gave this four or five stars. I can't remember if I gave it four or five. And again, this was just so upsetting and heartbreaking. And just thinking about it makes me sad. So I'm not going to think about it anymore and I'm going to put that to the side. The last and final one I read was The Last of Us to Burn by Will Dean and I believe this is a debut novel and I pre-ordered this and this was in my most anticipated releases of the year and I really enjoyed it actually. I love the sprayed edges. I don't know why I started then. I, okay. So I love the sprayed edges. It's quite a short read. I read this in one sitting. I was hooked. I hated the character Len so much but I think everyone that reads this will hate him and that's the point. The point is to hate him so he's written incredibly well in that aspect. The story itself was very heartbreaking in the sense that you kind of, you were proper rooting for Jane. I mean her not, real name isn't Jane, I can't remember what her real name is but he calls her Jane in this and it probably broke my heart. And then, I don't want to give any spoilers, so I'm not going to give it away. But when you reach like the middle way at this book and you read what's then happening, 
you're just like oh my god what is she gonna do and then the aftermath of that you're like oh she's dealing with this incredibly well I it was just really good so I gave it four stars I originally gave it three because I was like okay I really enjoyed it I read it in one sitting but it wasn't mind-blowing but then I was sat and reflected on it and was like but I really enjoyed it so I'm gonna give it four stars I don't care that it wasn't mind-blowing the story itself was so captivating and hooking that it just drew you in completely and you just wanted to read on to find out what happened so that's what I was doing so I gave it four stars in the end and I need to stop being so critical on myself in that aspect because I saw loads of people give this three stars and a lot of people saying it wasn't that great so again that I guess that was kind of then making me think in my head oh maybe I shouldn't give it four stars which I need to not do so I'm not going to do that in future I'm not going to take into account other people's reviews because this is mine my own rating and I need to not be thinking oh I shouldn't have given it that because someone gave it this I need to not do that so yeah I give this four stars and I really recommend it if you just want to read a nice fun thriller nice fun thriller no if you really want to read a captivating thriller it's really good so I really recommend it so there all the books I read this month of February 17 books have no idea how I did that I'm interested to see how many books I read in March and again we have growth because my January wrap up mid January we're uploading this February wrap up first week of March that's progress and remember it doesn't matter how many books you read in a month it matters that you enjoy what you read it's a hobby at the end of the day it's not a chore it's not a job you don't have to strive to read as many books as you want I wasn't striving for anything I just read these at my own pace and it doesn't happen often I don't read this much that often so don't feel bad if you haven't read as much as you wanted to read because at the end of the day it's supposed to be fun and we shouldn't judge ourselves based on what books other people read and I think that's very very important when we look at Instagram so thank you very much for watching if you have read any of these books let me know let me know your thoughts and let me know how many books you read this month